we're guessing a huge number of you have jumped onto the Genshin Impact online RPG bandwagon. Trust us, we know. Heck, developers Mihoyo knows this all too well. Whether you're taking things at a leisurely pace or scouring the landscape high and low for collectibles or cut copy paste Breath of the Wild landmarks, you'll have to invest a lot of limited time and resources to get stronger for the adventures ahead. Despite its strong single player campaign and the world rich in lore and breathtaking locales, Genshin Impact is still a live service game at the end of the day. Once you're past the honeymoon phase and dilly dallying in the game version of ancient China, you will start to notice how the lack of certain characters, materials, and weapons will hinder your progress in the game. With the limited resources you can spend, advancing efficiently in the game will require careful consideration of your available options. Of course, there's always the option of opening your wallet for an easier time. But before you head down that path, here are 6 tips to help save you lots of time. Think of this video as a quote unquote endgame guide, where you don't really need to spend a dime this far into the game. Number 1. Be smart when using your wishes. First things first, let's discuss everybody's favorite topic when it comes to gacha games, the gacha itself. You may have already figured out that the wish menu is the go-to place for obtaining new characters. For those unfamiliar with the gacha term, we're basically talking about loot boxes. To obtain these loot boxes, you spend currency that you collect in-game to gain a randomized set of characters and weapons. If you aren't planning on paying real money for this, you'll have to run a tight ship with this currency to obtain the right characters. The currency you use to summon these characters is divided between Intertwined Fate and Aquaine Fate. Intertwined Fate is used for limited time banners, whereas Aquaine Fate is used for a permanent standard banner. This distinction is important because of how Genshin Impact's pity system works. Here's how the pity system pans out. For a guaranteed 5 star, reach a total of 90 wishes on a specific banner. On a guarantee, your chances of the 5 star item being the featured character is 50%. This means that the intertwined fate is more precious as you'll want to save up on enough to land your 5 star guarantee during the banner's limited duration. On the flip side, you can spend acquaint fate freely without worry. Since that banner is permanent, you'll have all the time in the world to reach that guaranteed 5 star. Spending any acquaint fate you get is a good way to receive a stream of loot box related stuff while you save on the more valuable intertwined fate. Just keep in mind, that this also comes with the drawback that you can't aim for specific favorites. Number 2. Get more wishes via Primo Gems. You need Primo Gems to get both Intertwined and Acquaint Fates. These Primo Gems are given through quests and events. You'll naturally get Primo Gems by exploring the world, opening chests, discovering landmarks, and completing achievements. These rewards, apart from the opening chest bits, are one time only but can be a good source of income in the short run. Much like Azeroth and Skyrim, Teyvat is a very huge world, with more continents and countries on the way. For a more reliable rate of income, you'll want to start doing Adventurer's Guild commissions as soon as you can. These unlock an Adventurer rank 12 and consist of 4 daily missions. Complete these quests or dailies and then claim your rewards at the guild for 60 Primo Gems a day. Additionally, commissions are also one of the best sources for adventure rank EXP, so try not to miss out on them. Eventually, you'll want to get strong enough to start tackling the Spiral Abyss. This is a special single player only dungeon that offers Primo Gems on a monthly basis. But to be eligible for these rewards, you have to clear at least floor 8 out of the 12 existing floors. Needless to say, you'll need to spend a lot of time with the game before you can reach this point. We're talking character levels around 80 or higher. But it is something to keep in mind if you want more chances at wishes eventually. Number 3. Use your resin. Primo gems make the world go round, but they're not always the end all goal for everything in Teyvat. In Genshin Impact, upgrading characters and weapons are also tasks in themselves, as you'll need all kinds of different materials before you can push your party to the next level. You'll need to learn to spend resin, the stamina that regenerates over time on EXP cards, Mora, Ascension Materials, Weapon Materials, Talent Materials, Artifacts of Each Kind, Domains, and more. That's a lot of nut! With so many things to do and such limited resin on hand, no doubt many players will feel indecisive on what to do next. So, how can you avoid being wasteful or resin? And where's a good starting point? Simply put, make sure to focus investment on your 4 favorite characters at first. Once you've figured out your ideal team, 
go about leveling them up with your items. You'll reach a level limit, after which you'll need certain materials to remove this limitation, i.e. the ascending. The game tells you where and when you can find these materials, so make sure to read through those instructions. Eventually, you'll have a proper checklist of items you need to grab. Make sure to keep track of the materials that are only obtainable on certain days. These will easily become your bottleneck if you happen to miss the days they're available. Whether you have free time, spend your resin on bosses for materials, ley lines for experience and money, or artifact domains to collect EXP fodder for your 4-star artifacts. Soon, you have a little extra to strengthen other characters in your roster, thus increasing the flexibility and diversity of your party. Number 4. Stick to mostly 3-star weapons There's a limit to how much you can level up in Genshin Impact, so it won't take long before equipment becomes the main focus for power progression. In terms of weapons, start working on getting weapon prototypes to forge 4-star weapons. These can be obtained through souvenir shops in the respective cities or as drops from weekly bosses. Doing this might take a while, so stick to 3-star weapons in the meantime. As you explore the world, you will also no doubt receive multiple copies of the same 3-star weapon. Combine these together through the Refine feature to strengthen their innate passives. Though 4-star weapons will be harder to refine, they are still preferred due to their higher raw power. Next to start leveling up are your artifacts. Prioritize equipping 4-star artifacts and then level them up by consuming other artifacts as experience. 4-star artifacts can be leveled up to level 16 and doing so will upgrade their stats significantly as well as add and boost random attributes. Just don't forget to equip these artifacts in sets that favor your character's playstyle. You can get 4-star artifacts as drops through domains and by defeating bosses. Number 5. Fight those weekly bosses At Adventurer Rank 21, you gain access to a side quest called The Meaning of Lupical. Undertaking this questline will lead you to the Lupus Boreas Dominator of Wolves boss fight. This is a cryo-based weekly boss that drops powerful loot. These rewards include 4-star artifacts, character ascension materials, and weapon prototypes that you can use to forge 4-star weapons. This boss can be taken down with co-op, so bring friends. Assuming you've completed the main campaign in the Mondstadt region, Adventurer Rank 25 will unlock access to the Storm Terror fight, which confers about the same rewards as Lupus Boreas. Unlike the Wolf boss fight, you can only attempt Storm Terror in single-player mode, so bring a strong team and plenty of food. Both of these fights cost 60 resin to redeem the treasure, so try not to carelessly attempt these tough battles while you're low on resin. Even though beating these fights won't give you any primo gems, you want to work these two fights into your weekly routine to receive a steady stream of useful upgrade materials and equipment. Keep in mind that the rewards from fights also improve as you raise your adventure rank and world level. And to do that, here's our final tip. Number 6. Explore the f*** out of Teyvat This might seem like a no-brainer, but exploration is paramount to the Genshin Impact experience. Scour the world for treasure and quests, and you'll notice curious items called Animo and Geo Sigils. These aren't just for show, since you can use them to redeem rare items from the souvenir shop in Mondstadt and Liyue. The most important items to get in these shops are 4-star weapon prototypes, as well as exclusive items that upgrade your traveler's constellations. Also, do take note of important plants and minerals lying around in the world. Plenty of these are crucial components for ascending your characters, but the game makes no effort in remembering their locations. Luckily, the game lets you set up to 99 custom map pins to mark important locations, so you should use them to benefit in the long run. Chests, plants, and minerals will continue to respawn over time, so try to periodically revisit old locations to pick them up as they respawn. Opening chests are great for gaining Adventurer Rank experience points, and also contains useful leveling materials for your characters, weapons, and artifacts. Meanwhile, plants and minerals are used for crafting, cooking, as well as ascending characters. This is all well and good, but there's probably a time when- SHUT UP AND TAKE MY MONEY! If you absolutely, positively must spend money, either to support devs of the game or something else, you can go for the blessing of the Welkin Moon bonus. It's the daily login bonus that's available from the get-go. You get a good sum of Primo Gems delivered to you within a month for the low cost of RM1990 or US5. 
It's basically a steal since you get a good number of gacha rolls. The battle pass that comes with the game is fine to spend money on too, but just remember to make the most out of it since it's on the time limit. You pretty much have to play the game twice per day if you want to hit all of those reward targets. That is the threshold of spending you should set on if you're not too sure on whether you want to contribute monetarily to this F2P game. Granted the gacha and microtransaction system offers a good first impression of things to come. Seriously though, it's not worth blowing 150 US over double Ventis and Dilux. It's tailored to make you sink money into it like a bad habit. Don't fall for it. And that's it for our post prologue onward to Adventure Rank 30 and Beyond guide for Genshin Impact. Hope this video helped you out. If you loved it, or have some criticisms about it, or want to leave some more advice for people playing this game, do leave them on the comments below in a civil manner, please. We also have new vids coming in every week, so do subscribe and tap that notification icon to get sorted on that. Thank you, and have a pleasant mountain climbing journey in Teyvat. <laughs>